Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to my channel, Watch Time LA. Hello folks and welcome to another episode of Watch Time LA. Today we're going to be reviewing one of the most controversial watches out there. Uh, along with movement, we're going to be reviewing the Vincero. If you Google Vincero or you put Vincero in YouTube, you will see some of the most scathing reviews of watches you could possibly find. In fact, some of them are labeled, whatever you do, don't buy a Vincero or Movement watch. That, that's the basic opinion of the watch world. I'll go into why that is, or why I believe that is, in, in a little bit. And I am going to tell you, more importantly, I actually anticipated doing a review on a watch that just came out. It's actually a Timex Automatic. It's called their Marlin. And... I always said that if Timex came out with a decent sized uh, automatic watch, I'd be first in line. And true to my word, I pulled the trigger on it and I can't wait till it gets here. Um, you know, am I expecting the world? No. But it is worth a look. With that out of the way, let's talk about this watch. It is obviously made by Vincero. And one of the best things about this particular watch, I think, is it's. SKU number, blah, blah, 211, <laughs> I mean S11. So I assume the blah, blah means black, black of some kind. And there is the um, UPC number. And if you put this UPC number in anywhere, it will come up. So there is our box. It comes with a sleeve. And it comes with a very nicely textured, kind of cool looking box. Now, they, let me just tell you how I got this watch. I got this watch as a total surprise. My wife bought this for me as a gift, not for a birthday, not for anything, just a because gift. And I asked her, how did you find this watch? What made you pick this watch of all the watches you know that I own and have? What made you pick this particular watch? And she said, they got me. They must know that I know you or something in the computer. And the Vincero watch kept hitting her in the face. And then this particular one popped up. And she said they finally wore her down. And she bought it for me because she thought it would be a great gift. And every, wife, every gift from my wife is great, period. Hope all you guys understand what that means. Anyway, I'm going to open the box. And the first thing we have here is a message from the founders. Let's see. Uh, we wanted to personally thank you for your purchase. Our team has worked extremely hard to develop a product that is bold and refuse to compromise. It means the world to us to have you on board. We ask that you always remember your legacy starts with the edge of your comfort zone. Choose your Choose to live your legacy. Welcome to Vincero. Now, the name Vincero certainly sounds Italian, as an Italian. Uh, it sticks out at me. But we'll get into exactly where this comes from in a bit. We then have the Live Your Legacy bold cart, as you can see. Your time is limited, so don't waste your time living someone else's life. Very profound for a watch. And then we have the watch itself. It comes in this very nice felt box. And it's, if you can see, even from here, you'll see kind of a bluish coating. That might get you excited temporarily. And it has what appears to be a very nice leather band. And I will tell you that it is a very nice leather band. It is leather, it smells like leather. Yep, I always smell everything. Uh, kind of, I, I may have been a dog in a previous life, I don't know. But as we get this closer up, 
I really apologize about the glare. I'm going to have to do something about that in a bit. But there is the watch. As you can see, it does have a date somewhere between 4 and uh, 5 o'clock. We'll get to that in a minute as well. It is a PVD coated piece. And according to their website, this is 316 stainless steel and it's coated. And you know, I'm one of those people that if you have something coated, uh, it's eventually going to scratch. I do have another uh, off brand here. This is my, what is it? Sungu, Sungdu. Sungdu. Watch. The reason I got this watch, just because it was cool looking. Maybe the same reason why my wife got this. But this was one of the first watches I bought two years ago when I got into this hobby. If I were to do it again, would I buy the same watch? Probably not. I wouldn't. But that being said, one girl one time told me that they thought this watch was worth $5,000. One of the tellers at uh, Wells Fargo Bank. I'll never forget that. She pointed it out. She goes, wow, that's a really nice watch. Everyone's coming in here with really expensive watches. I said, well, how much do you think this was? She said 5000 I told her, well, you're a little bit off. It cost me $22. Anyway, back to our watch of the day, the Vincero. Now, this glare is really killing us, but I'm going to just start with this. They say this is a sapphire-coated mineral glass crystal. What they're saying is that it is not a sapphire crystal is that they took some sort of coating with some sapphire material in it and coated the mineral glass. So this is not a sapphire crystal, but it does have that kind of look. Now, if you're thinking, well, a real sapphire crystal or sapphire coated crystal wouldn't have this much glare, I will tell you, I don't, I'm on the extreme, extreme LED light here. I tried switching camera angles here. I was going right from the top and now I am at a different angle, and I hope that's better. You get a better view here of what we have here. Basically, what we have here is an all black on black on black watch with two tiny, almost not there pencil hands and a second hand, which is also uh, black down at the bottom there. And then we have the chrono hand, which of course is also black. So does the chrono work? Yes, it does. And in quartz fashion, it goes one tick at a time. What a glare on this is crazy. I'm so sorry. And when you stop it, and it goes back to pretty darn near zero. Now, I will tell you, when I first got the watch, I'll tell you a couple of things about when I first got it. I took it out of the box. I removed the little protector that goes in here to keep the battery good. I pushed it in. Nothing. And it does happen with course watches sometimes, so I took it out and I pushed it in again. Nothing. And then I decided to flip it over, and that's when I discovered the marble. They say it's marble or some sort of marble type of thing in the back inside this what would be a display back I guess it appears to be a screw down back and actually it was I was able to unscrew this back and I wound up having to replace the battery I turned it back over I pushed it in and it didn't work I was like uh oh time to tell wifey this thing doesn't work and I pushed it in again for now the fifth time and boom the little hand down there started to tick so, it turns out it was a functioning watch. So once I got the watch working, I went to go set the date. And you can hear the detents, kind of. One, two. So that's for setting the hands, obviously the hour, minute hands. And the first one is for the date. And when you set the date on this, it is a lot of turning to get to the next day. 
just look at this. There's about three revolutions per day. If I compare this to like my uh, Seiko, it, which turn, seems to turn about three days per revolution, it's a pretty long way to get to the 31st if you're on the first. Now, rather than having me screwing up and jiggling all around, I figured I'd try and get you the best angle at this that I could and talk for a little bit. The Vincero watch is like a movement watch. In fact, they're so similar, I was wondering if they were the same company and I wasn't able to dis determine that one way or the other. Um, if you look at some of the movement pieces and you look at these pieces, they're almost identical. When I was in New York recently, I'm in LA, obviously, watch time in LA. Uh, one of my uh, nephews had a movement watch on and it was almost exactly the same, except the hands were black too. Now, when you have a black watch with black face and black hands and black indices, what you have is strictly a piece of jewelry. It can't be used to tell time in any significant way, obviously. Uh, in fact, I asked him, I said, please look at your watch real quick and tell me what time it is. And he, he was, you know, trying to, he didn't know why I was doing that, but he was trying to get it up to hold it up to the light and he's moving it around and trying to figure out, at least this one has some white hands and it can be used for telling time. Um, but a lot of the watches that Movement and Vincero make, Time is really a secondary thing. These are fashion statements. This fits that bill. Does it look great? Absolutely. Does it feel great? You know what? It does. It has some heft to it. The band is excellent. You know, much better than some of the uh, bands I've gotten on Citizens and Seikos and Bolivas. So I'll give it that. It was a little stiff though, however. It took a long time to get this shape. And because it's still a little bit stiff in a little while here, as an added bonus, we're going to be putting on, I'm going to show you how to put on one of these little, uh, basically for lack of a better term, band savers. They're, they turn your belt buckle into a clasp system. And these are eBay items. I think I paid somewhere around, I bought several of them at different sizes. I think I paid somewhere around $3 for this one. So you get the idea. We're going to be putting it on the buckle side and the band side. And we're just going to be able to now snap them in place. Boom, boom. Well, I didn't get that right. And we're going to show you how it's going to save the band in the long run. We'll do that in a minute. Anyway, so back to what these are. Uh, is, if anyone knows what a parness is, you know, Parnas is one of those companies where people will brand, put any brand they want on them. They look like Rolexes. They look like um, all different kinds of high-end watches. And you can brand them any way you want. I'm kind of of the school now on this when I look at these watches that the movement and the Vincero brands and some of the other fashion brands do the same thing. They have a single supplier or it's the same exact company. And they just put different brand names on it to see what sells. I'll tell you that Movement and Vincero, they do a great job of marketing, maybe the best. So this is in line with a Michael Kors or whatever. The, it's actually a lot cheaper, though. The Michael, By the way, I'm a Quartz fan. I have a lot of Quartz watches. I don't mind Quartz watches. I also have some very expensive watches. I have some Tissots and, and uh, other you know good mechanical watches. But... I have no problem with quartz watches. They, they fill a niche, and uh, if you want to tell time, they're really good. <laughs> they never stop on you unless it's a year later after you've put the battery in. But, you know, what are the specs on this? So th they say it's a scratch-resistant, um, like I said, sapphire-coated mineral gl uh, glass crystal, surgical stainless steel, and an Italian leather band, like I said. And it's also 159 everywhere you look for it. So they have some pretty good price protection, uh, like almost like Apple does. They really control the price of their watch. It's not a $500 Michael Kors. And I could tell you that after looking at some $500 Michael Kors, I will tell you that this particular one exceeds the quality of those by leaps and bounds. Um, but they all call them luxury watches, but they're not. When we're talking about what a real luxury watch is, these days it usually means it's an automatic. It can be, you know, it's, it's a uh, 
long jeans, I mean at the low end. And then we go up to Hublot and, you know, back down to Breitling and in the middle there, Rolex and things like that. This is not a luxury watch. This is a fashion watch. When I first got it, once I figured out that there was actually a chronograph hand, I wasn't sure there was. I didn't think, know if these were real or fake. But once I saw it was actually moving, I noticed that when I stopped it and I returned it, it went way past, almost a second past on the other side. I was able to mess around with uh, the battery, taking it in and out. And, you know, if you have the patience for that, I got it to just almost perfect. As you can see there, it's slightly just ever so slightly to the right. Just ever so slightly. But it was almost a little over a full second to the left of that. Okay, so this piece of marble or whatever it is, if it's real fake or just a piece of plastic, I have no idea, is in there. Uh, I'm glad the battery was dead in a way because I always open up the watches and I'm going to do that for you right here. Here's a, a watch opener. Be careful if you use one of these. You can get them on Amazon for a couple of bucks. I'll have the link below. And they're very sharp. If you happen to pop off this thing when you're turning it, you're going to scratch the hell out of your back, your case back. So uh, what I do is I, I like to get this situated in there. And this wheel, by the way, is what opens and closes it. So I'm going the wrong way, of course. And I want to get it tight in there so it doesn't move around too much. Right? And then holding pressure and turning and making sure that there's no way this thing is going to pop out of there and ruin my case back. Now I am doing this holding uh, this thing in between me and the camera so this is not an easy task. So one thing I noticed right away when I took the case back off it actually has some weight to it. So whatever this little thing is here in here it's pressed in from the back. You see, it has nothing to do with that. I thought it was, a, when I first looked at it, there was a piece of glass over it, like maybe a display case back, and this piece was in the back, but it's just a little round piece pressed into this molded case, and it has some weight to it. Actually, it's one of the, it's definitely the heaviest case back on a quartz watch I've ever seen. So, um, that's for whatever it's worth. It does have a gasket on it, although the watch is only rated at 30, uh, 30 meters. And it has a fairly large movement in there. It is a Miota movement, and it's one of the larger ones I've seen. How, and it does take, uh, what is it, uh, a 920, SR927, SR927 battery. I don't think I need to put this under the scope for anybody. There's really not a lot to look at here. There's really no finish on it because nobody's expected to look at it. And this movement is a little bit bigger than a normal quartz watch with a chronograph. But it's, you know, those normal quartz watch movements are tiny. They, they barely fit in this space right here and everything else is a spacer. Wide open spaces. You can look at one of my other videos on quartz watches and you'll see how small they are. So another cool feature that this had, it had these quick release strap. You rarely see this on a watch of this uh, price range. It is so rare, I can't even tell you. In fact, I think this might be a first, especially on a fashion watch. But one of the reasons they did this is because they also sell a whole bunch of different bands with the Vincero insignia on them. So, you know, it's a smart marketing move because they get to sell not just watches, but different color bands. And this actually would look good on a brown band or a light tan band. Depends. What do you think? So back to the case back. Back to the case back. Um, you know, it's a screw on case back, so it's very easy to put back on. Right, uh, I did lubricate this by the way, it wasn't lubricated from the factory, but I always do lubricate the O-rings so they don't tear when they go back on. And I'm going to get that on about as tight as I can with my fingers. And I am going to then hold it in my hand. I'm just using the pressure 
of the watch against my hand. I'm not trying to hold it by the lugs. And that's it. Back is on. Okay, now we're going to do a couple of quick measurements. And we're going to see how accurate they are on the website. 43, almost exactly. Let's do that with the crown. And see, here we go. We're at 46. 40, almost 47. So this is where these things start becoming bigger and bigger on your wrist. Let's do a lug to lug. By the way, this is all plastic, so it's not going to scratch the watch in any way. 48, that's not too bad. Thickness? 11, about standard for a quartz watch. Let's look at the band. Width. Band width. Oh, I'm not getting a good perch on here. 22. I like a wider band on a wider watch. It makes it look more proportioned. If this thing, if this band was any smaller than this, it really would look ridiculous. And one other thing about black PVD coated, uh, in order to find a black PVD coated band to match up, on this one probably wouldn't be too bad. You could do it, but you know, why? You're pretty much stuck with uh, leather or maybe rubber strap if that's what you prefer. The quality of the band, by the way, um, the clasp signed, the crown signed, and of course, it has no information. Uh, another different thing about this particular watch, normally you'll see stainless steel case, stainless steel case back, or uh, quartz, myota, whatever. There's nothing like that. I'm going to pop these off and get set up here to put on that little device I was talking about that will stop this from happening. Every time you put on a watch, you have to pull it back like this to get it into one of the holes. And that's what ruins these bands. Now, I didn't have to take the band off to do this, but I wanted to take the band off just so I could show you how it's done. On the one side, it's fairly easy. Now, I didn't have to take the band off to do this, but I just wanted to show you so you can see how this is done. Like I said, these are three bucks on eBay, and they're definitely worth their weight in gold, if you, especially if you don't want to change bands. In fact, if you go and look at some of these bands on the website, they're $20, $30, $40. Honestly, if you're going to get a band, uh, don't bother getting the ones for 30 40 bucks. You can find them for 10 bucks and less, and they're the same. So slide this down. Get it to the point where you would have it in normally. See, it has a little pin there. You're going to push it in and snap. And that's it for that side. The other side, a little bit more complicated. What we're going to be doing is... We're going to be replacing this. Of course, you lose your sign crown, which you're gonna, I mean, your sign um, clasp, and you're going to be putting that in the box for a later date. The same thing you would do if you were taking out links to a bracelet, so you don't ever lose it. And you're going to be taking out two items. You're going to be taking out this and this, and we're going to do that with a watch spring remover. Okay, this little fork. We'll go underneath here, grab around the pin, and pull it off in a perfect, perfect world. Let's try it again. I'm doing this at such a terrible angle that I'm afraid. There we go. Okay. So we're going to take this off and set it aside. We're going to take our pin out. We're going to be reusing that. We're going to take this guy out. We don't need that at the moment. And now we're going to put this back in. And we're going to put this back on. Okay, with the help of my magnifying glass friend, which wouldn't work in front of the camera, I finally popped that spring bar in place. So how does this work now? Well, it's as easy as... Oh my God. This is why you should always pay attention in class. I put it on upside down. Fail. Okay, so we're going to try that again. I flip this around. <laughs> oh, such an idiot sometimes. I'll put this back in here in the correct position. All right, so how does this work now? You simply thread this through. Well, let's try that again in the camera. You thread this into here, and you go snap. 
No more bending your watch band. Three bucks, eBay. Buy them. Okay, so here is my Vincero watch. Sands are Vincero clasp. This is a great way, guys, to save a lot of money on bands in the future. You can reuse this thing on any band you want, as long as you get the right size. Of course, this is a 20 millimeter. Actually, you measure it. You have to measure them here, not up here. Most bands get narrower as they go. This is 20 millimeters here and 22 millimeters here. So I use a 20, a 20 millimeter butterfly. That's what they call, by the way, butterfly. And it fits very nicely. And as far as whether you think this is the worst watch ever made, like having uh, the plague on your wrist, that's a personal opinion. I personally do not feel that way. Uh, had this been the moment of black pencil hands, I think I probably would have had to tell my wife to return it. For me to wear this as a piece of jewelry is just not my thing. If you're a young guy and you're a millennial and you're strutting through the office or, um, you know, and, and need to make an impression, this is the way to go. I mean, it's beautiful. Let's put it this way. Only the watch snobs know what a watch snob likes. There's a few other people that might know, the, the people who wish they could afford them or wish they could be watch snobs. And, you know, I, I'm not putting down watch snobs. There are motorcycle snobs. There are... Uh, and when I was in the motorcycle world, I had Japanese bikes, I had German bikes, I had uh, Harleys, and, you know, I, I rode with different people because they didn't like riding with each other, which I thought was so bizarre. You know, I didn't care if I was, I was, I was riding around in my little 600 Suzuki or my full-dressed uh, Harley bagger. It didn't matter to me, and it shouldn't matter to you. It's the only thing that should matter to you is what you like. And... I think this is a fine watch for the price for 159 bucks. With that out of the way, don't forget to look at my uh, website, watchtimela.com. Also, please, 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 it's very important, guys. You keep me going. You make me want to do these by subscribing. If I have no subscribers, I have no reason to do them. And the more subscribers I have, the more it motivates me. And don't forget to check out my eBay store. I'm going to put up a little slide here. I have all kinds of, guess what? Fashion watches on sale there for some as low as $10 for friends, family, and little trinkets. You could buy your wife for those in-between days where they're not, you're not actually, they're not actually pissed off at you, but they get in there. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Vincero Quartz Chronograph. And don't forget to check back, folks. The very next review I do is going to be on the Timex Marlin Automatic. I am excited beyond belief to do that review. I hope I'm not getting myself all excited for no reason. And you'll see why when I actually do the review. Until then, have a great day.